Hello friends, welcome to another, in another episode of the Urban Homesteading channel with Professor DIY, Mrs. DIY and Elpida. So today we're going to tackle a, what I would call an interesting project, right? A little out of my wheelhouse, the, the designer today is Elpida and we're going to make a shade, is that what it's called? We're going to make a lap shade for this very nice cast iron uh, lampstand, right? Floor lampstand. So again, like always, we are going to show you everything and we're going to discuss tips and tricks on how to achieve the same result we did. If you have an existing lamp shape, uh, it makes sense to use it to get an idea of scale, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's the only reason we are using this. We're not going to do anything else with it, but we wanted to make sure what, what the scale is. And we're going to change and we're going to have a rectangular shape, not a circular one. That fits better with, with the decor we, we want to match. So for this project, we decided once again on cedar for two specific reasons, I guess three. One of them is the cost, right? This is a very inexpensive wood, it's, at least in our area. The other reason is that it is a light wood and we don't want a very heavy, uh, we don't want a very heavy shade. And the third part is fairly easy to work with, right? So we're going to start by how we always start with this and that is by uh, planing it so we have a nice finish if there is a negative in working with the cedar posts it is that it is very rough in appearance as you can see and some finishing is required before you can move forward with whatever you, else you're going to do with it in our case the thickness planer works beautifully it gives us two faces that are absolutely perfect and it makes the wood pop out if you do not have a planer, however, you can use a sander, either a hand sander or a power sander, and you're going to get very, very satisfactory results. We did that before we had the planer, and it worked absolutely beautifully. So, it is not a requirement to have a planer. Planing is a rather messy operation, as you can see here, and it removes quite a lot of material. It is very fine material, uh, not the finest, of course, that would be sanding, but it is fairly fine material, but it's extremely satisfactory to me at least when you see the board coming out of the side of the planer nice and smooth totally transformed for a very rough really not finished product to what it is something you can display in your own home so if you're using a planer get ready for a substantial mess most certainly planners make a big mess around your area and working outside help us clean a little bit after planing the next step will be to use our miter saw to cut pieces to their uh, final length. The, the table saw is great to cut pieces to their final width, but the miter saw really excels in giving you a very fine cut for your final length, especially if you need something really repeatable. So now we're starting the building the frame of our shade, and we're going to, to use screws. This is not visible, but you could actually use screws as a visual element, right? But also what we are doing here is we're using cedar for the weight, right? We still want everything to be as light as possible. Oh, but this is not visible. That's what I mean. All right, so we're going to finish the frame. As you can see, it's a, a, a simple process and we're making two frames, one dimension, uh, two frames, one dimension, then we're going to connect them. That way we have an economy of wood, right? So sometimes we are, we are dedicated to show you our mistakes as well, right? And technically, this is not a mistake. We knew there was a likelihood for this to happen, right? Even though we're making pilot holes, mm -hmm. these are very small pieces of wood. So we, we split the wood, which is interesting because our first frame went out without a hit, right? Mm -hmm. This one split, and, and that is okay. I think that's okay at least, right? And uh, what we do, we're using some tape to, to keep it uh, all together and then... So what we did first was back the screw out and take this apart and then we put some glue around the edge and we pushed it into the, the cracks where it had to split. Now we've got it back together, we've got tape holding it like a clamp, but the tape's going to be easier to work with as we continue to build this frame. And then we were able to take the screw and go back in and just be a little easier on it. Um, sure, start so at the beginning. Be, so this will be a really nice, uh, you know, secure joint in spite of the screw. Right. And you can even leave it there, actually, if you want to, you know. Again, this is not... As long as it doesn't... Right, it's not an invisible part, right? Yeah. right? So these are small pieces, and we're using screws because we wanted to have a very nice long-term contact that will not come apart. 
but we, you always run the risk of splitting the wood, right? A pilot hole is a must for this specific um, application. Is that the right word, application? Yeah. So make sure you make pilot holes and go slow. Again, they're very small pieces of, of wood. And if there's a negative to see, there is that it is a soft wood, right? And as you can see, the pizza there was very, is very, very slow. And, uh, and if you split it again, here you see the first dry fit from the frame. Uh, and Pida and Mrs. DIY are holding it together. But this gives us a, a first sense if we need to change the dimensions. Again, by building the frame first, not only it makes sense, but it allows us to see if the dimensions are correct. And if at this stage, which is easier and without sacrificing a lot of material, we can change anything and make it better. So our saw was outside when we were planing. <laughs> so our saw was outside when we were planing. And, uh, you know, so it got a little shower. It's mm -hmm. like it snowed cedar, yeah. which is a nice smell. Pretty cool. Yeah. But not what we were aiming for. Having completed the frame, we start now milling the rest of the materials. And here we're cutting our smallest pieces to the correct width. We're going to have narrow pieces and wider pieces. And we're working here with the narrower pieces. First we're cutting them to width and then we're going to go to our to inside and we're going to use our miter saw and cut them to the correct length. So this is the process we're using overall to make sure that uh, we have the material we need before we start final assembly because if we run out of material of unfortunately we're going to have to stop and when you interrupt your flow of work then it takes you longer to do the thing than if you already played and you have a good. So in order to make our assembly easier, we're going to put some vertical pieces as well. They're not necessary. We're going to use hot glue and some brad nails to hold them together, right? And this is the vertical piece, but we do have it flat on the table for stability and to help us with the one, two, three block. To make it easier. Mm -hmm. So a blob of glue, glob of glue, quickly attach it, hold it for a couple of seconds, and after a couple of seconds, it should be done, actually. Okay. And we're going to do that all around until we have a frame, in essence. Now, if you do not have a brad nailer gun, it's not necessary, right? Mm -hmm. This is a step we're taking because we, we just want to be a little more secure. And we were planning to use that as a structural component. Right. And this just helps us be a little more structurally um, sound as we're moving this piece around. Right. And okay. Excellent. So we're going to, again, we're going to do that all around. And we're going to show you the finished uh, frame. And here we are in our last corner and a dab of hot glue. Again, not needed to, to use the staple gun, we just chose to do that, right? And actually, I was thinking, when you have the sides attached, really, even the screws are overkill for structure. You could only use hot glue and that would be fine. I don't think, the wood is very light, like you can lift it with one hand, right? I mean, well, with a finger. This is a very light structure. It is not a, a problematic structure at all. Now we have to do a lot of cutting and... Uh, we're going to show you a dry fit next after we finish all our cutting. So ladies, here is our frame. What are we doing now? Now we're determining part of our, we have to do one more structural element in addition to planning for our vertical pieces. The structural element is going to be a piece that fits in here on either side that raises a cross member, which is what will sit on the actual lamp itself. And then we're also planning for our vertical pieces. So we are going to mark the center point and this one does take a little bit of a planning because there are some specific sizes and spaces that we're going to be using here for this design. So the important thing is here that, that this mark is in the middle, right? Right. In our specific cases, we have an 18 inch width, mm -hmm. a 14 inch depth, and a 10 inch height, right? right? But you don't have to, I mean, that will change based on your lamp shape. Right. So you can custom make it to your own size, but for this lamp, that's what's looking right. good. Let's take a look at the lamp again and just show it around it. And and you start getting a little bit of a, a feel now, right? Let's pull it out. Let's see. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Come this way. So we have a lot of pieces to cut that they will become our in essence the sides all around the and because we have that, the easiest and fastest way is to put a stop, right? And you can see here we've said it. In our case the dimension is around ten inches, but it's not critical because we created a story stick as we always do, right? So if you put that there, and I'll bring the blade down and you're going to see it is touching, right? 
So this is the right dimension. So we're going to just moving fast. And to make it even faster, we'll cut two at a time, right? And if it comes to full stop, you won't tend to lift them if you so you know. Alright, and here we're in the bus zone and we are going to resaw everything in half. So we're trying to resaw here. In essence, we're checking and see if it's actually worth doing, you know. This is only a test. So earlier in the episode, you saw us uh, resawing on our bandsaw one of our uh, pieces, right? Mm -hmm. And we did that because we thought we'd like a thinner look, right? Yep. But then when we actually put it on the frame, we did not like it. <laughs> it looked a little well, out of a line or proportion. proportion, yeah. This is totally a matter of taste, right? Definitely resawing it takes a little more time, but lacks half the material. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. If you have a bandsaw and you want to resaw, it is an option for sure. Right? We tested one piece. We did not, we, we like the, the design here look better. So we're going with that, right? Mm -hmm. We have finished cutting all our pieces and we are ready now for the assembly. So we're doing a, a quick sanding right now. We're not all quick sanding because the pizza wants everything perfect. And because we have a lot of pieces, the power sander makes sense, right? This is the production part. We have to do like an assembly. A lot of pieces have to be cut the same width and the same length. And now we are fin we have finished cutting them and uh, we are sanding them so they have nice smooth finish. After all, this is a piece of furniture. As you can see, woodworking makes a mess. It is not dirty. In other words, this is clean wood, but definitely it's messy and has to be cleaned up. Again, Having a belt sander is not necessary, but it does make things go faster, right, Elvida? We are using it because we happen to have it. That's all. Not a required piece of equipment. And of course, a little more sanding because we wouldn't be our channel if we didn't spend half of the time sanding. Yeah. 70% of the time. But we spent a little bit of time. No, we, we accelerated our need for sanding or, or decelerated, however you want to say it. We didn't need as much sanding because yes. we put things through the planer. Ah, is that what right. we did? Yes. Okay. So that took off a lot of the rough finish on these. And so now we're, these are like the edges that we didn't get through the planer. And again, the construction like this can be used for a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. For example, you can use plexiglass and make it a display. Uh, sure. Especially with, uh, I like the way cedar looks and finishes. Mm -hmm. it, it is very nice. Yes, it is. So we're doing a dry fit here because, and I'm laughing, I'm sorry guys, I, I thought I was recording before, so this is take two, right? Uh -huh. to, to get a, f a feel of how it would look, and we're going to put, as you see it right here, you're go we're going to put it on the piece, but we're going to use a spacer, as you can see our spacing is right. inconsistent. And, and, and the reason why I'm wanting to lay these out a little bit is because the color is inconsistent across the board, and you can see some that have more redness to them, some that have more yellow to them. And I, if possible, I want to distribute that fairly evenly throughout the piece as opposed to uh, just having all one color on one side. Okay. And imperfections does make the piece unique. We, oh, yeah. we do not mind about yeah. that. So this, for me, actually just brings out a lot of character. And kind of interesting. It's not the final product. No. no, but it's very interesting, right? So this is what we did to lay out um, all of our pieces, make sure we had enough. Uh, we did have to cut a few more of these skinnier ones just to make sure we had enough to go around. And this helped us lay it out and distribute the color evenly, or at least to a way that we find pleasing. Mm -hmm. um, and so that tells us all, also about our spacing. So we did adjust our spacing a little bit as well based on what we have available. And so now we're going to start uh, assembly. So we're about ready to start the assembly. And this is our first piece. So here we are. This is the finished product. And we made it for Elpida. So Elpida, what are your thoughts? Good. I still want to do the oil on it, though. Yeah. But I mean, if you don't protect it, it will, it will turn gray. Right. And I don't want that. I mean, that's one of the things of cedar, right? In case our viewers don't know. Right. Either you poly it or you oil it. You need to do something. Poly it or, right. you know. 
you need to do something to protect the finish if you want it to look this way for a long time. Mm -hmm. If you don't, it will turn gray, and some people like that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with turning gray. Now, the other thing I want to show our viewers is the inside. We made our own, uh, uh, what do you will call it, stand connector. It's a connector to the lamp. I don't know what the exact term right. is called. Oh. So here, on top of most every lamp, there is a, an area that you can attach. So we made our own. You can buy them ready, but we wanted these dimensions. We couldn't necessarily find those dimensions. So we're going to, to put it on here, and we're going to show you the final, final product. Well, friends, and here is our uh, said on our post. This is the post that uh, Elpida found some, some time ago, and she really liked it. And we had a hard time finding something that would match it, right? Mm -hmm. Again, there are many options that you exercise when you make your own uh, sage. This is something that the LP that like, and we designed today, and we executed today, and this is what she was looking for, right? Mm -hmm. So let, let us learn. What was the most difficult part of it? Always do dry fit, right? We, you learn what you like and you don't like. The design changed a couple of times. Yeah based on dry fitting. So dry fit is a very, very useful uh, product. This is a very, very um, affordable project, right? I don't know how sage, you ladies are born of that. How much sage costs something like that? How much will it to that buy new? A couple hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. You bought one from a store. Like so that. this is eight dollars, nine, not even uh, for wood, right? I mean, right. so very, very inexpensive to build. And the only thing I want to say, if you build something like that, build it with uh, light wood. Do not go to like a mahogany or anything like that because it would become too heavy. Mm -hmm. And this specific frame could hold it. Right, but, it's a very heavy metal. but there are many frames that could not. I mean, this looks like wrought iron, actually. I don't know if it is, but it is definitely iron. An, an iron. iron yeah. Something. So this is not a problem. It can definitely hold well, this is our final product, and, and we have a little tilt that you might be able to see. And the reason for that is because the top of the lamp is a little damaged, and we have to fix it. So we didn't have time to fix it today. But this is the, the lamp with the light on, and you can see how nice it looks, right? Mm -hmm. And again, it hasn't been oiled yet to finish it, and it'll give it a, it'll be a little bit darker on that wood, and you'll see more of the wood grain. But I think this turned out really, really nice. Well, folks. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Urban Homesteading channel. And if you did, we'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the other button twice. Share, like, subscribe. Let us know if you like this product and if you like projects like this in the future. From Professor DIY, Mrs. DIY and Elpida, have a great week.